everyone. So I have this template. It's an Among Us theme. Um, so it, I'm going to make it into a digital escape, but it's pretty versatile and you can uh, do whatever you want with it. Um, the thing to, I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how to make this character move from one section to another, sort of like a maze game. So if I enter the answer, you'll see that the color changes to indicate the correct answer. And then you will also see that the little guy moves across the screen. So I'd have to choose who I want to investigate, purple, and then do my next task. And then purple is not the imposter. And if I continue, I can vote on who I think the imposter is. If it's not the imposter, then the imposter wins. If the person guessed the correct answer, say it's orange, then the player wins. So I'm not going to show you how to make this whole thing. All I'm going to show you how to do is make the little guy move across the screen, sort of like a maze. If you want to know how you could get a hold of this particular template, you can look in the description to learn more about where you can access uh, this template. So let's get started. So before I get started on Google Sheets, I'm going to open Google Slides. So I'm going to find an image or a background that I want to use as my maze. So here's my background that I want to use for my maze. Once I have it set up, then I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to Download. You can choose JPEG or PNG, doesn't matter. So once you have your image downloaded, what you're going to do is you're going to go to imgonline.com. So this is the site I use to split my images. From here, I'm going to go choose a file. I'm going to decide how many columns I need. Uh, for my image. In this case, I need four. And how many rows I need. In this case, I need two. So for making square parts, make sure you turn that on. We want them to be square. It, they fit better when they're square. Okay, and then you're going to just choose your output image format. I just leave the standard and click OK. So once you get to this part, you can actually open each of the images just to see what they look like. Okay, once you like how they look, you can download the whole, all the images in one zip drive. So you just click on uh, this option and it will download everything in a folder for you. So the reason why I have the parts cut first is because now I can see where I can place my a little character so that it doesn't get caught up in the cut for when I actually cut my second set of images. So here's my game piece. So uh, you can find a game piece that doesn't have a background. If it has a background, you can use a background removal program up to you what you use. Um, so I removed the background and now I'm going to just place my guy wherever I know that he's not going to get cut in half. So I'm going to place him here, and I'm going to do con Command or Control D to duplicate. And then I'm going to move him to another section. Once I'm done moving, putting my little game pieces in all the sections, once again, I'm going to uh, download this slide, and, and I'm going to repeat the, pro the same process I did with my first image. So now I have a new spreadsheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second sheet. To add a second sheet, you just click on the plus sign to add the sheet. So I'm going to name this sheet my answer key. To name it, you just click rename. Okay, so in my answer key, I'm going to put uh, the question and answer. Here I'm going to have seven questions, so I'm going to label that. And for this case, all my answers will be set to one. Okay, so I'm also going, going to put my images in here. So the first images, I'm going to put my first set of, set of image, which was uh, just the blank background. 
So you don't have to resize anything. You're just going to go and click uh, insert image and then image incel. Okay, so once I have my images insert in, inserted inside the cell, so I have both sets of images in here. So I have a total of 16 pieces. Now I can go to my first, back to my first sheet. So I can set up my sheet to where I want my uh, parts to go. So I'm going to merge some cells. So I'm also going to decide where I want my uh, questions and answers. So maybe I want them here. Then I'm going to decide where I want my images to appear. So I may merge some cells for the row. So here's where I want to start. So I can start with eight first. And I can insert a test image just to see what it will look like. Okay, so this looks like a good size. If you want your image to be bigger, then you can just merge more cells. So maybe I'll merge another row and then widen the column. Okay, so if it looks the size that you like and you're happy with, um, then you can just delete this. Okay, and now you can um, resize. You just go, you right click and click resize column. Shows we need 147. So the other three columns, I need to make sure I resize them to be the same size as C, so it's 147. Again, right click, resize and change that to 147. Okay, once I've done that, I can also merge these cells. Okay, and then you can drag uh, your cells to merge. Okay, and then I'm not gonna drag these down because I'm not sure the size, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. So, uh, when I go do my image, I have to keep in mind that my first set of images are blank, but my second set is not blank. So now I'm going to set up my formula. And in this case, I want my character to appear when I haven't done anything. Or, so I want my game character there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to type equals. And I'm going to put an if statement, and I want B7. If B7 equals the answer key, so I'm going to click on the answer key box and click here. Then I want comma, I want it to be blank if they enter the answer, because I want him to disappear after they've answered, because he will move on to the next section. So I want that to be blank. And then I'm going to put comma. But if, again, parentheses, and again, I'm going to go to B7 is blank. So equals, I'm going to put blank. Then I'm going to make sure that, that the game piece is there. So well, I want him to appear when it's blank. So then I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to close my parentheses and click Enter. Okay, so now my game piece appears. So to double check if I'm if it works, if I enter one, he should disappear, and he's gone. So it works. Okay, so for my second question, I want it to be different because I don't want my character to appear initially. I want it to appear once my first question is answered correctly. So first I'm going to start with an equal sign and if. And of course I want him to also disappear if he if if the player answers correctly. So 
I'm going to put if parentheses question two is basically correct. So equals my answer key. And I've enlarged this image so that for this tutorial so that you can see the images better. But uh, when you're creating this, you don't have to enlarge the image if you don't want to. So then it's going to be comma. I want it to be blank if it's correct. So here is my blank image here. And then comma if. And I also want my character to move into that box once the answer is correct. So I'm going to go back to my first question. If my first question is basically correct equals the answer key. Then I want it to have my character in that section. So here is my image with the character in that section. But I also want to say that if my first question is blank, so if, so if uh, the answer in question one is blank, then I also want D, D7 to be blank. So I also want this space to be blank. So I'm going to click back on the answer key and go back and click on the blank image. And then I could close my parentheses. Press enter. Okay, and we can test it out to see if it works. So, and it works. Okay, and then I'm going to continue to do this with each of the boxes. Now, if you wanted to, you can also copy and paste from the previous format and then just change some values around. If you want to do that, you just copy it up to the equal sign and then uh, paste it into your next section and then change the values around. But I find it easier to just uh, click back and forth so I can see exactly which uh, image I'm inserting into the section. Okay, so now I'm on my last box and once again, all I have to do is click on the equal sign and I'm on my last question. So I'm going to click if the answer is correct. So it equals the correct answer. Then I want it to be blank. But also, if the previous answer was correct, so question six was correct equals the correct answer, I want it to appear. But if question six was blank, so the, the, if the answer in question six equals blank, then I want it to also be blank. And close the parentheses and enter. And there it goes, and you can check to see if it works. Okay, it disappeared, so it works. So now I could format this to make it look better. I can move my, line them up and then test it out, see if it works. Okay, and everything works. So last thing to note about this setup is if the incorrect answer was entered, then what will happen is well, your images will disappear. So um, if I were to, all my answers are set to one now, but if I entered all zeros, you'll see that each uh, everything will disappear. And if you notice, it will stay false because none of the conditions were met in the formula. So what we want to do here is we want to fill this space with color. So um, I'm just going to fill it with black. If you fill it with a different color, also make sure you change the color of your text as well so the false blends in. So then this is how you will know if students got any of the answers incorrect is if the image disappears.
You can also set up a conditional formatting to make the answer boxes change color, but the students will already know if they've gotten the incorrect answer because the image will disappear. So it's already telling them that they're wrong, but you can also add an added, an added conditional formatting thing, but it's not really necessary. And last thing to note with your main sheet and your answer key, just make sure they are set to the same setting. So if you go to the one, two, three, you'll see right now I have my sheet set to automatic and your answer key. Also make sure you have it set to automatic. And if you change one sheet to plain text, then just make sure you also change the other sheet to plain text as well. So I will provide this basic template. You can find the link to this template in the description. If you want a more advanced template, like the one I showed you in the beginning of the video, um, the link will also be in the description. And that's how you would create a self-moving game piece in Google Sheets. And that's it. Thank you for watching.